Zimbabwe uh, has, certainly in the region, been recognized as one of the education powerhouses uh, for some time. Our students are, for example, sought after by South African universities and other universities, and our teachers are, are found in many of our neighboring states because their quality is, is recognized. However, in the context of a rapidly changing socio-economic environment in Zimbabwe and internationally and, of course, in the region, the need to reform our education to prepare learners for challenges, the challenges of the current times and the uncertain future uh, requires that we change our education system to identify and nurture diverse skills. All people have God-given talents, but they are always very different and diverse, and these need to be, as I say, identified and nurtured. So as good as Zimbabwe's education system has been in the past, one of the critiques of our system has been that it has been far too academically orientated. And that has resulted in the last couple of decades of ten, in tens of thousands of Zimbabwean children being given a very good academic education, which however has left them unemployed. And we recognize that vocationalization uh, is a critically important change that needs to be made or, in, or rather enhanced in Zimbabwe's education system. I'm going to try and keep my talk uh, as short as possible. I have got a paper, so those of you who want to go through the paper, it will be made available to you. But in brief, I want to look at the rationale for vocationalizing the Zimbabwe curriculum, our current status in Zimbabwe of TechVoc education, challenges that we face, and, and strategies that we intend employing. As I mentioned just now, one of the key concerns about our education system has been this bias for academic and the re resultant failure of our education system to prepare children adequately for Zimbabwe's economy. And this was recognized in 1999. The government instituted a commission of inquiry into education and training. And one of the key recommendations of that Nzara Masanga Commission, as it was called, was that we needed in particular a secondary school curriculum with a strong vocational component to create employment. And so since 1999, we've recognized that we need this new uh, direction within our education system. The rationale for providing technical and vocational education uh, in the Zimbabwe school system are as follows. A, to provide a curriculum with content responsive to business requirements and learner needs. To produce students who can competently come up with technological designs to solve problems. To provide a wide range of tech voc subjects from which students could choose, to link those tech voc educational courses to relevant science and engineering courses in tertiary institutions, to link learners with economic activities around their school environment. Zimbabwe, in the last decade, as we all know, has unfortunately been through uh, a decade of turmoil. And as a result, many of the recommendations contained in the Nzara Masanga Commission in 1999 have not been implemented. 
So the current state of our tech voc education in Zimbabwe uh, reflects the position pre-1999, which, although, as I said, had the strong academic bias, did have elements of vocational education. Having said that, though, one of the key ad advances that we have made in the last 10 years in, is in the promotion of ECD, early childhood development. And that has focused on initial orientation uh, towards tech voc subjects, including practices in art and craft, music, computers, and physical education. Our primary school curriculum consists of 13 subjects. 50% of these are practical, and they include environmental science, music, art and craft, physical education, home economics, and computer studies. At junior level, the curriculum is broad-based and there's no specialization. Students are expected to, sub to study at least two tech voc subjects, one a business commercial subject, and at least five compulsory academic subjects. A fairly wide range of tech voc subjects are on offer, and these include, amongst others, agriculture, art, building studies, commerce, metalwork, music, woodwork. At middle secondary, that is forms three and four. In Zimbabwe, uh, we end up uh, form four with students writing O-levels. Students are expected to be offered tech voc subjects as well as business commercial subjects in addition to academic subjects. Uh, the following tech voc and, and business commercial subjects are offered and examined at, at O-level. Uh, they include agriculture, building studies, fashion and fabrics, food and nutrition, metalwork, technical graphics, art and music, music and economics. The, having done um, O levels, uh, children can then go on to be examined uh, by the higher Education Examinations Council, leading to what is called a National Foundation Certificate. The subjects on offer fall under the following categories, Applied Arts, Automotive Engineering, Building Construction, Computer Studies, Electrical Engineering, Hotel Catering and, and Tourism, Mechanical Engineering, Science and Technology, and Performing Arts. We do also have a variety of subjects offered at A level, uh, including drama, food science, and, and the like. Our examination board, the uh, Zimbabwe Schools and Examinations Council, does offer uh, practical sub subjects which are examinable at both primary and secondary level. But what about the challenges facing the implementation of a vocational education in Zimbabwe? I think that our primary challenge now is the lack of adequate resources, both material and financial. And regrettably, this is not uh, something which simply afflicts uh, Zimbabwe. It's a subject that I spoke on at the World Education Forum in London in January this year. Internationally and domestically, uh, the world is simply not applying sufficient resources to education. Whilst, Madam Minister, I'm very impressed to hear that Botswana is allocating 27% of its uh, budget to, to education. I believe that as laudable as that is, and it's certainly above what we are, contributing to education, it is insufficient. If we consider the example of countries such as South Korea, Singapore, and Finland, one will see that those countries have had a sustained investment in education over many decades. It is also very interesting to note that those countries have relatively low uh, budgets for defense spending. Sadly, in Zimbabwe, over many decades, 
although we have focused on education and education consistently has received the, the top amount of uh, spending in our budget, defence has always been a very close second in Zimbabwe. And let me stress that that is an international problem. And until we change our priorities, our funding priorities, we will be faced in Zimbabwe and I suspect elsewhere with a, a dearth of the resources that we need to adequately develop the teaching of vocational education. As we know, in many of our schools uh, throughout the continent, they lack the resources, lack the, uh, the equipment um, that we need to ensure that an adequate vocational education is provided to children. Tied into that, of course, uh, is the challenge that we face regarding the production of teachers uh, who can teach vocational education. Because in Zimbabwe, our tradition has been academically orientated. We have very few teachers who have the necessary skills uh, to teach vocational subjects. That has been compounded in the Zimbabwe context by very high staff turnover because our teachers are marketable both within and outside Zimbabwe. So bearing in mind these challenges, what are our strategies to strengthen our TECFOC education? They are as follows. Firstly, we intend implementing a two-pathway education structure which is skills-based. We intend establishing district TECVOC model centers, and we intend in future to develop those and to equip those centers and to provide uh, the necessary vocational education equipment necessary to schools. A critically, critically important strategy is, of course, staff development which entails the transformation of our teacher training colleges uh, to achieve more of a balance between academic and vocational subjects. We need to develop strategies for school on the shop floor. A critical uh, strategy is, of course, curriculum development and review. The Zimbabwean uh, curriculum was last comprehensively reviewed in 1986. And we have now this year embarked on a new uh, review and reform, a comprehensive review and reform of our curriculum, uh, funded by the Open Society Institute of, of Southern Africa. We have a major workshop uh, scheduled for December this year in Zimbabwe. We recognize that this needs to have broad stake stakeholder representation from all sectors of our society, including agriculture, mining, commerce, law, all the professions, so that we can take into account the needs of our society, not just our current needs, but of course our projected needs over the next 15 to 20 years. We are drawing on expertise from, from other countries. Uh, I've had uh, extensive discussions with the Finnish government, for example, which is widely recognized as having one of the best vocational education systems in the world. And I'm delighted that the, the Finns are assisting us in our curriculum uh, reform exercise. There are key areas that we need to, to look at that uh, are deficiency areas in our, our current education. I don't have time this morning to go into the, them into, in detail. but. Uh, these include uh, ICT, not just the teaching of ICT as a standalone subject, but its application in the teaching of all subjects. Uh, they include the environment. They include the promotion of subjects such as conservation agriculture, which I believe has the ability to completely transform not just Zimbabwe, but the whole of Africa. And of course, we increasingly need to look at sport and arts and culture as business because they can generate enormous wealth for any country and provide 
a career for many children. Ladies and gentlemen, in Zimbabwe, we recognize that vocational and technical education needs to be become a vital mode of educational de delivery from primary through to tertiary institutions. Our intention is to come up with an education system that mitigates poverty through the enhancement of employment creation. A well-designed TechVoc education will indeed be education for employment. Nonetheless, because of the high cost involved in its implementation, it needs our government to, to make education as a whole a, an absolute budgetary priority, not just in words, but in deeds. And that is going to require some very difficult political decisions to be taken. In closing, I think it is important that we all have a regional and continental vision. I increasingly talk to my own children, not so much about Zimbabwe, but about SADC as a region. We need a common plan because our future will be so much more vigorous and exciting if we harness our diversity. And to that extent, uh, functions like this are important not just for our own countries, but they're important that we develop, certainly at the very least, a regional vision for vocational education. And because of that, we are very grateful to African Brains uh, for organizing conferences like this, and we hope that they will just be the start of many in future. Thank you.